Today is October 10, 2023. Welcome to the morning meeting. So yesterday, um, I thought it would just be a boring day. You know, the market's just chopping around a little bit. And you can see that's basically what we got in, in, in the beginning, right? And then markets actually started to, um, to break out. Then they came back just you know where this order block is here and then they just pushed up during the lunch hour let me just make this bigger during lunch hour here nothing much happened lunch hour is usually not the time to trade but as soon as it was over at 1 p.m they started a bike program that ran all the way up and what did it do it took out the high here and more importantly it took out this swing high so if we look at the daily chart here the es just going to zoom in show you that this guy here this one was the last daily high right if you use a little tool to show you um, swing highs and swing lows you can just you know add that and here it says sh swing high which is a very simple characteristic it just means that on the left hand side the high is actually lower than this and the high is lower than this high and also on the right hand side, the highest lower than this high. Right? So you need higher lows on both sides. Then you have a swing high, basically. Some guys might interpret this a little bit more in terms of that this has to be a red candle. That is not always the case. This can also be a green candle. So don't make it too complicated, but the highs, they, they matter. right? So taking out the swing high is essentially what the market did yesterday. And um, yeah, I'm basically uh, turning bullish now because, you know, we are building higher highs. We're taking out swing highs. And the next thing that's been going on, and we got really close to it already today in pre-market, is this little range here. Right? Just a little bit above the swing high, a little bit, you know, above yesterday's high. And um, we, are, we are going there. We, we were almost there, right? And now it's easing back a little bit. So possibility that we will also take out these guys and also possibility we'll take out that guy but we don't know yet what else is there to say when we look at this daily chart here in the es well if you connect the swing low here that we put in place a few days ago and again you know like this one has um, a higher low on the left hand side and also a higher low on the right hand side that's the only characteristic you know this is how we swing back up and here's how we swing back down right and this one here was also swing low so we swing back up even though it doesn't go very high and then we swing back down and then up again this is just how the market swings right so you know if you look at the daily chart like this you can also connect um, a swing low with a, with a swing high that's just, you know, further up there. So, for example, if you look at this here, let me just zoom out a little bit. We obviously don't just have this swing high right here. This is the, this is basically just the previous one. We took this one out, as we said, as I said, like yesterday, right? So, this is the one before that. So, you know, the markets might be eyeing, you know, going all the way up to this swing high at some point, not to take that out, etc. Same with this guy. But, yeah, we have we are not anywhere close to that right so the question really is if i connect highs and lows swing highs and swing lows and then i look at a 50 percent fib retracement where where is that and the answer is, is right here at 4400 this is equilibrium this is when the market is balanced out everything above it is a premium for people who go long and everything below it is a discount for people who want to go long and what we can see right now is buying is taking place and it looks quite convincing buying is taking place and so you can make a point that you know you can still buy at a discount down here just until you reach the 50 percent fib level and then we go into premium okay so we'll see what this day brings if we get another spike up right now it appears that they try to go higher you know to basically take out these highs here but then they ease back right so that's basically you know important to notice now the question is why do i pick this swing high and not this guy right here and the reason is the intensity of the move started here down 
sideways, basically unchanged, down, 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 a little bit of sideways, down, sideways, and down. This is really where institutional money started selling. This is when they started selling. So this is why I'm not taking this one here where, you know, it just dribbled down a little bit and then went back up a little bit. No, this is really when the action started, you know, we're really fear selling in here. And this is why I connect the FIP range to this high and not to that high, right? So this high and that high. And then we end up with the 50% FIP level here. This is, as I said, the fair market value, basically. Everything above it, you know, you're paying a premium. If you go along everything below it, you're basically getting in for a lower price, which can be considered a, a discount, right? Yesterday, I also looked at a little of lower levels. You know, there's another swing low here, another swing low there. Those lows are pretty close to each other. There are also some guys sitting here, right? You can easily see all this. And I'm pretty sure at some, pri at some point, the price is also going to take all these guys out. The question usually is, what happens sooner? Um, do we just, you know, go to... Um, an area of stops that is closer to the current price action or do we just go somewhere which is further away or how does that work? Well, that's really hard to say because, you know, we were already down here. We got pretty close to taking out those highs. I mean, let's just measure that. Down here, we were at 4,236, right? This was 4,205, so 30 points away to arrive at these laws, you know, 30 points is not that much, right? This can easily be uh, done in a day. Just spike below and then go back up, right? But it didn't do it. Instead, it started going up. Well, what is the reason for that? Well, I guess you can say that we had quite a move down. So the market needed, you know, a little bit of a bounce. That's what it got here. And we'll see if this bounce goes much higher. But for now, it looks bullish and there is a reason to potentially go to the 50% FIP level to equilibrium. And then, you know, we, we don't know how, how much higher exactly it would go. There's a horizontal structure here, as you can see, 618 is sitting here close to the structure as well. And then obviously there is a theory out there that, you know, when we basically go up, then the beginning of an order block which means where institutional money started selling, could be a target. And it's usually the candle that's of a different color than the order block itself. So what does that mean? When they start selling here, red candle, slightly green candle, red, 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 red candle, green candle. And this is definitely an order block here, right? So they, they do nothing but selling over several days. So you can make a point that, okay, if you combine this with a swing high, this is the swing high, this is completed here, and this is the follow through for the swing high. So where we might be go back to, it's basically, you know, where the order flow started and the candle of a different color would be this little guy here, this little green candle, and usually it's the opening price. So this level right here at 4,500 and one and a half points, something like that, this is a level where, you know, price might run to if it continues higher over the next few days and then it potentially stop and reverse. Okay, so this is something to notice, but we are not there yet. We're trying to figure out right now what to do with today, I guess, right? Because in pre-market, you can see that they put a fake new high in, right? Yes, it's a new high, but we are easing back. So everybody who got excited in pre-market already, and we're only an hour away from the open, Everybody who already got uh, excited about putting in a new high and maybe, you know, everything goes higher, they got a bit of a damper already, right? And usually this is what they do. They fake the first move. People just go for it, especially retail traders who are just already sitting at home in pre-market and they want to do something, etc. And then they start buying here as soon as you break above yesterday's high at 4,377, and then they just send it down 10 points. And lots of guys already get stopped out, right? So, you know, that's that's pretty much the what the initial move of the day does. It's the same with uh, long candles. You know, when they open here, they go down first, right? They fake it, and then they go up, go a little bit higher, and then 
into the clothes, you know, some covering, etc. Then they bring it down again. It's the same here, etc. You can look at pretty much any kennel with wigs. That's usually how they form. It's first a fake move, and then they go in the you know intended direction of big money, and then at the end of the day they might just ease back a little bit, and then the day is done. That's essentially how this works. Okay, so I have talked a, quite a lot now about the daily kennel CNDS and. You know, if if you would not use the other equities to kind of confirm your view or, you know, find other reasons why your view might not be correct, um, you know, that, that would be a dumb thing not to do, right? So let's just take a look at the NQ. The NQ, and I apologize for, you know, drawing so much stuff into this, but um, let's just, I have to fix this actually. I'll also put that here. And then I have stuff here. This is actually from yesterday. I can actually show you this real quick. I don't know if I posted this. I don't think I did. And I'm going to deactivate uh, all this mumbo jumbo here. This was yesterday. This is a Gartley on a two minute chart. This is where the market opens a few hours, a few minutes after that, pushes up, brings it down to 689. So it's between 618 and 786. So that's a Gartley pattern. Goes up again, does not take out A, goes down to 786 slash 1272. I'm not going to draw the ABCD here as a per trigger. I'm not going to do that right now. And you can see this is where the turning point was. The ignition started right here and then it was nothing but up. And this goes to show why on some days it can be a really good idea to just hold into the close and not sell this prematurely at some you know really early level. So I just wanted to show this. Um, let me just um, remove this for now. Let's go back to a daily chart. I have a lot of stuff drawn here. This might be interesting. And this is actually the next thing I wanted to show. So if you if you follow the same logic here in the NQ that I just showed you in the S, um, and you draw the FIB from this high right here where the order block started, all the way down to the lows, you can see we've already reached equilibrium. So the NQ is already trading at a premium now if you intended to go long. Okay, so that's one, for, to, one thing to keep in mind. Okay. Another thing is, which I haven't mentioned yet, let me just show you this, fair value gaps, right? And I'm just gonna remove this, I don't have to draw it in there as well. So here's a fair value gap. So fair value gap means when price came down here, it did not retest this area. It didn't retest the area going back to this low of this candle. It just basically rushed through it. It didn't go back. But price has the tendency to retest those levels. And these are called fair value gaps. You can have them to the downside. You can have them to the upside. Um, so we are testing it right now. We are testing it right now. And we might try to, you know, fill it. And maybe we might actually ease back. Out of this out of this range here we'll see right so basically the idea is okay we have we have a down move um, we took out this low right here and then maybe people started shorting things but they didn't they didn't get very far right i mean they, they could have made some money but they didn't get very far instead rather than just shorting it and you know really working its way uh, much much more down price st started to stall here and then actually went up okay so it went up and we are now filling this this fair value gap right here okay um at the same time you know we have an order block that's going down here so you know you, you can make a case that we might reverse here at least intraday we might reverse you can also make a case that we might go higher and get somewhere to this level or even to this higher fair value gap that's a possibility too so these are just levels um to really to really keep in mind to really keep in mind okay so after a move down like this consolidation comes back in you want to see strong price action and you know what we've seen so far is not bad right and you want that price action to actually take out the last swing high in this case, which is right here.
okay, which is what we did. And then you're looking for a fair value gap for a potential reversal. Could be this one, but could also be higher. We, we don't know that yet. So that's what that is. I can also show you this in the S. The fair value gaps are just sitting here. We haven't touched them yet. We are we're a little bit ahead of the game in the uh, in Q right now. And then eventually you can look at, at the DAO. Um, it's pretty much the same picture. This was um, fairly steady, you know, order block here for multiple days. Fair value gap is sitting right here. And we still need to actually take out the last swing high, this guy here. We haven't taken it out yet. As you can see, right? So the NASDAQ has progressed the most, followed by the S, and then followed by the Dow. That's essentially what we know. You could theoretically also look at the Russell. The Russell is very far away from the last swing high and taking them out. It also has a fair value gap here. Um, lots of professional traders, they don't really look at the Russell that much. Okay. So this is about equities on a daily chart. And what we should also look at is the VIX, for example. Right? The VIX has eased back. It's still quite choppy, but it has eased back for now. There isn't really much, much else to say about it at the moment. If we look at the notes, just bouncing a little bit. It's not much. And here we are kind of, you know, going lower but stalling right now in the dollar basket and then the euro usd it's doing the same thing right if you look at the daily chart you can see here i had drawn this you know horizontal structure and we are still working with that horizontal structure that's what we are doing um, so let's dive a little bit deeper into the equities on an hourly chart and do the same thing also with everything else and i'm going to deactivate uh, this little helper right here so here are the nodes. There isn't really much to do here. It's the same here with um, the dollar basket, it's just chopping around. You cannot really draw, you know, that many interesting levels. You know, like even if you want a, a butterfly here, so these are lower lows already than this one. So this is not in 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 line with the specs for such a pattern. EURUSD is very much choppy right now, so forget that and then the VIX is all over the place right it's all over the place here so there's nothing to do but let's take a look at the ES so this is basically what it looks like right now I had a very strong push up on Friday then we we gapped down but you know basically caught this fall right around here we just measure that yeah 0.5 right this is a very important FIP level for, you know, looking at the markets like this. So 0.5, it came down, then it pushed up, took out the highs, the previous swing low, as we've seen on, on the daily chart. Okay. And by the way, if you look at this, this was um, essentially the European Open right here. That was 3 a.m. New York time. So that's a six-hour difference, right? So that's 9 o'clock. European time in the morning, they took, they basically reached the 50% the FIP level and they only went up from there. So this was also trade entry. It's a trade entry right there. And then you don't have to bother about anything else. You go straight into profit, eases back a little bit, pushes you into profit, eases back, and profit and profit. If, if you can manage to hold this till, to, till, till the close. Lots of people cannot do that at all. They get nervous as soon as it comes back, which is which is normal. It is human nature. Right? Okay, so this is the S right here. Can we draw anything here on the hourly chart? I don't see too much to do. I mean, I would have to zoom in quite a bit, but right now, maybe a triangle, but there isn't really much else to, to see here at the moment, right? You can always um, try to work with, um, you know, the most recent push up. I would say maybe we can anchor it here, put it right there, something like that, right? And then maybe watch what happens here at the fifty percent. If they push it down to it, then maybe this could be a reversal point. 
So hourly chart in the NQ, it's basically the same story. There's, there's not much difference here. But it's there's nothing to draw right now in terms of patterns or anything. YM is the same thing, Russell is the same thing. What are you gonna draw here? Right? It's nothing to do. Let's also look at gold. Gold has obviously profited from the turmoil in Israel and the Gaza Strip. So that's essentially what uh, might have propelled a little bit higher. But what, what is high? That's like $30 more, right? Um, that's, that's nothing much. And also it was overdue for a bounce. Overdue for a bounce, right? And oil, I think I, I cleaned house a little bit recently. So we might be missing a few things and I have to put them back in here. Let me just do that right now. So we had a move here, pull back up here, 786, so right around here. So big cipher pattern over multiple months, almost the entire entire year but we didn't quite reach it. We might still go there. But right now on an hourly chart, I don't see anything to do. And then, you know, it's the same thing, I guess, with oil. Obviously, oil also reacted to those uh, issues there in the Middle East, but it was also due for a bounce. And there's nothing much to draw here. It's just chop. Crypto land. That's an idea for Bitcoin. So I saw that earlier today. Might also get a cipher on this one. Apart from that, right now you can draw a butterfly. You can anchor that down here. It takes you up there, down here. This was already a sufficient pullback, at least 3A2. It's 462, which is fine. And then we need to measure the FIP extension. No, I was that too low. Hang on. Let's not rush this. Let's do this properly. There we are. Go back here and then take a look at what well, this was nicely drawn by me, wasn't it? Okay, so 1272.1414 could be the box for the reversal here, maybe even lower as long as we don't touch 1618. This always has a big advantage. If you have seen what I showed you for the S and Q on daily charts, talking about taking out highs, order blocks, stuff like that, 50% retracement. It, basically, the story is always the same. They are chasing stops, right? That's what the, what smart money does. They just chase stops. So we can chase this stop right down here. People you know, who are long might have put their stop here. They might also have put it here. They might also have put it here. So there are multiple um, points or pivots that might get taken out. And this butterfly would do that. It would just, you know move below all of them and then reverse again right take everybody out and then go up that's why the butterfly from my point of view is like the most compatible with like real smart money trading or you know just just the moves that smart money controls basically ethereum it's not that clear you know at big drop, it's coming back up. So I don't know. You you look at it, right? This can also be considered an order block right here, very strong. So you can anchor things in a certain way. You can consider this a swing high. And then you also get a little bit of a green candle here. And this is where you can make a projection where price eventually might come back up to, to this level right there, 1629, 11, something like that. Okay. I'm not gonna monitor all this all the time. Just wanna mention it, give, give some ideas and the rest is up to everybody to draw and, and, and constantly monitor and, and figure out. Um, I think that's most helpful. Okay, so I've, I've really talked now quite a bit about about all the, the futures contracts here and the different asset classes. So I'm mostly somebody who, who looks at the ES. So 
I would assume we there is potential for us to go lower and maybe around this level right here. Um, that's that's basically what I'm what I'm looking at right now. So we'll see what happens today. Another level that should always be drawn is not just the midnight opening price, which is here, but also the 830 price. And that one we just had right around here. This is the open at 830. So these two price levels are also relevant for how the day might might develop. Right. And then if you look at it, this is basically just sideways. You could also measure this in a certain way for what we have now. And then you get your equilibrium right around here. And this is what you might also be working with. Wicks are always question should we consider them should we not consider them if you don't consider them you get your 50 percent pretty close to the midnight open right pretty close to it maybe i'll just leave it like this it's just you know for eyeballing it that's what it's what it's all about and then we'll see what happens the rest of the day i have i have an assumption or a scenario I might go down here and then maybe do this up I, I really don't know i really don't know we'll see okay i think i'm also going to go for drawing an imperfect butterfly because we undercut this a little bit here well, actually we didn't oh it is it is fine okay that was just an is vision issue right <laughs> So let's just measure that real quick. You can see there's the one to seven two right. So that's another scenario if they fake it, and uh, they might bring this down a little bit more, whatever they want to do. We could get to this level here. You can also see this. There's this low sitting here, all by itself, right? This can be taken out if we take the butterfly trigger to 1414 or just in between 1271414. Right? So there's also a possibility, maybe that's the first thing to kind of look at, is to only go here and then go up again. Okay. I am expecting a little bit of a chop day today because yesterday was also a strong day. Um, and But there are no news today, right? Look, this is the calendar. Nothing. Nothing really important, but tomorrow we will see a PPI coming out before the market opens, and then also FOMC, and then the next day on Thursday, core inflation, and Friday there will be consumer sentiment. So after today, it's going to get uh, volatile for sure. So maybe we get a bit of a slower day today, but I said the same thing yesterday was wrong, so we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, so we went for all of them. Let's take a look at uh, individual stocks real quick because I missed this yesterday. The market had already opened when I tried to look at it. So apologize for being so slow. Let's take a look at um, what we had yesterday. Uh, no hits for Jesse Stein setups. Now we get like free uh, results, free tickers. This is an ETF, so we're not looking at that. This is a biotech company, not going to look at that either. But we had it on uh, as, as a result already a few days ago, last week, whenever it was, right? And then there is, uh, I think we also had this one, you know, the chart is just chop, uh, oil and gas midstream, right? So there's nothing here. Pre-markets, let's refresh this one. And let's see if there's anything interesting. Gainer side, this is this has doubled, tiniest of market caps. This is up 10%, uh, $34 stock, 400,000 shares traded, up 10%. Seems to be a news catalyst. Uh, with Mitsubishi Electric to invest in co coherence, new, as I see, business, whatever it is, silicon, carbon semiconductor business. Okay. So they, Mitsubishi Electric will invest. In, in the unit, in, in this carbon unit of these guys here. 
So we can look at this um, at this stock and see how it's behaving pre-market. Before we do that, on the decliner side, this is has been split in half. We don't care about this too much of a move. ETNB 30%, we don't care. And then uh, PD uh, is not down 10%. This doesn't really, and this has hardly any volume. So the only thing uh, standing out here is COHR. So let's take a look at that, COHR. And I'm interested in the one minute chart. Basically going into the open. We, we already had, this was probably the, the news event. We just fired this up. Um, then it came back down, it's been going sideways. So yeah, not, not that much to see here. This is what looks like on a, on a line chart. Let's take a look at a daily chart. This is trading pretty low right now. We're just sitting down here. Had a big gap down with the last earnings. So yeah, this, I don't know. I mean, this seems to be a important level. If you draw just a horizontal here, I would probably put that somewhere here. Yeah, right. Like this is like a key price around $30, you can say, $30. Now we are at 34 and a half. So it's, you know, going up a little bit. It's not leaving anything behind it, right? It's just a, a news play, obviously. Then if you look at um, pre-market, I think usually pre-market here doesn't really exist. You can see the other days, there's no pre-market action whatsoever, right? There's absolutely nothing going on usually. This is not Tesla, this is not AMD. This is, this is a stock that usually nobody cares about in pre-market, but today they do at least a little bit. So you can see that there is excitement and it eased back a little bit, stabilized and it's going, it's going high into the open. So maybe there's something, but I don't know what to draw here, right? Because the other issue is this is very, it still looks very liquid, but I also don't really have those proper data packages anymore. So if you sign up in TradingView for having pre-market data, that is not just approximated, um, but real pre-market data, you might be able to draw uh, things much better in here, right? But this is generally though, we had, we must have had a spike here, came back and it's just going sideways. So I don't see anything that interesting to do in here. I guess the only thing is if they, for whatever reason, sell off a little bit, we might go down to 618. And maybe this is where buyers would step in, right? Or maybe buyers will just step in right away. But they already eased back, right? So we'll see. I, I don't know what else to do with this guy. COHR. I can put it on a list. Um, and then we can look at it again in a few days. Talking about the list, we can actually look at a few things. Just see how they how they did. Look at that. What did I say, right? A few days ago, pivots everywhere. Breakout failed, fake. That's how they do it. Took out all the guys who were just waiting to buy the stock right here because that's what William O'Neill teaches you, right? Investor Business Daily teaches you, right? Kula Maggie teaches you to some extent too, right? Like all these traditional teachings you have to buy breakouts if you do this especially in this market you get roasted so it goes all the way back down now it might probably take out multiple of these lows and then it might go up if it does that right and then dell it's it's just you know this ai story in dell that dell, dell is an ai company i don't buy that it's easing back it's easing back. It's not, it's not continuing strength at all after this gap up. A firm. This is an old drawing here. It went pretty much right there and then it also eased back, right? Also eased back. Cleaning house a little bit. It's just not a market for breakouts. Roco. People got sucked into this. Here with the news, they would cut 10% of their overhead. Yeah, is that it? Exactly. So they made retail excited and all the smart money, they basically sold to retail and then retail 
bought and bought and then everything collapsed. And this was heavily promoted. Was it the Motley Fool or something else? Yeah, this is what you get when you when you follow analysts or editors of investment magazines. You get shit, nothing else but shit. I think this was a stock in play at some point a few days or weeks ago. I can't remember. I don't know why I put it in here. Probably out of pure boredom. This uh, Vale Resorts thing also came back heavily. This never broke out or anything. Didn't make any attempts. What is this? Energy stuff. Nike. <laughs> yeah, Nike triggered here. Nike triggered right here. You can see where I had this drawn, right? I said, okay, this is the gap up. If you enter it here, this is your risk. This is potential reward. Hasn't made a lot of progress yet. This will be an interesting one to watch as well, if, if this works. And then COHR that we just added. Okay, guys, I think that's all there is to say. So be careful out there. Don't do anything stupid. I'll be focusing on the ES. Be looking at the NQ and the Dow. That's what I do. I don't care about individual stocks at this juncture in the markets. If we get uh, if we get a real bull run again, if we get a lot of momentum and growth stocks, that's a totally different picture. But we don't have that, as we have seen, you know, about a week, week and a half ago, when I did the Kula Maggie uh, setup search, there was absolutely nothing in it. So we are far away from any bull run. We might have a swing up, that's fine, but that's it. We don't know how many days this will last. We're not talking about something lasting for weeks and months or a year. This is this is the environment you would need for Kula Maggie style stuff, for William O'Neill breakout stuff, for for all these things, right? That typical you know, retail traders are interested in, right? But right now, I don't think it's the time. All right, take care. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.